Hi, I'm Louise Elizabeth and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through my crypto and the controversy around my crypto and my Ether wallet. And I hope that you enjoyed this video today and if you do then please give me a thumbs up as it really helps me to grow my channel and understand what kind of content you enjoy. And if you do like this video today and you feel that it may benefit others then please feel free to share. So what is my crypto? Well, it's a way that allows you to access the Ethereum blockchain and you can go through and send and request funds, send offline transactions and interact with contracts. So why is there any controversy around my crypto and my Ether wallet and why do they look so similar? Well, basically, my Ether wallet was created by Kosala and Taylor. Those two have now split and my Ether wallet and my crypto have now become two separate companies. Now, there's two different sides to every story. And Taylor gives a very detailed description as to why there were issues within the relationship between Kosala and Taylor. And she gives a lot of detailed information about the contributions that Kosala made and the contributions that she made around the really busy point between Q3 and Q4 in 2017, where she's stating that Kosala almost took like a back seat and where she then carried on with the development of my Ether wallet. And she then states that 2018 is now the new beginning. So she's gone through and she's created this new company, which is my crypto. And 19 of the 20 members of my Ether wallet have actually moved across with her to my crypto. Now, one of the most controversial things about my crypto and the my Ether wallet split was that the actual Twitter page that was for my Ether wallet actually belonged to Taylor. So what she did is she simply went through and changed that to my crypto, which caused a little bit of confusion from her followers. And Kosala has also released a official statement on Reddit and he doesn't provide quite so much information with regards to the reasoning behind it. However, he does state that for the reasons he can't delve into, their partnership had to come to an end. Now, there were also some legal issues around Kosala who was trying to access the books around my Ether wallet, which then obviously led to the end of the partnership between Taylor and Kosala. What I'll do is I'll put the links to both the statements in the summary of the video below so that you can go through and take a look at those different statements and make your own assumptions from those. Taylor also has quite simply a link to what is my crypto where it then takes you to that statement on the my crypto site. Now, as ever with my crypto, there are a lot of different phishing sites on here. So please do ensure that you go through and you actually select the correct website for my crypto. And you can see in terms of the user interface, it is almost identical to my Ether wallet. So having a look at almost the main screen to begin with, you have the ability to create a new wallet, send, swap, offline, etc. And if I just take us back to my Ether wallet, you'll see that you have the new wallet, you have the send Ether and tokens, you have swap, send offline, etc. So not a lot of difference between the two. So how do we go through and create a new wallet? So first of all, what you need to do is you need to go through and you need to enter a new password to create that wallet. Now, when you go through and create that password, it encrypts your private key. So it doesn't act as a seed to generate your keys. You'll need this password and your key store file to unlock your wallet. So you enter in your new password and then click on to create new wallet. So you then need to go through and save your key store file. So your key store file is your JSON file or your UTC file. And what it does is it holds an encrypted version of your private key. So what you would need to do is download your key store file and then you can click on to I understand. So what it does, is it states that do not lose it. It cannot be recovered if you lose it. Do not share it. Your funds will be stolen if you give this information to anyone. Make a backup and secure it like the millions of dollars it may be worth one day. Then you click on to I understand and continue. You're then provided with your private key. Now, in relation to your private key, ensure that you keep that offline, keep it somewhere safe so that no one else can access it. As if someone else does have access to your private keys, they'll then have access over your assets and your funds. Now, obviously, as this is for test purposes only today, and I'm not going to be storing any live assets within this account, I can share this with you today. And you can also go through and print a paper wallet from this page where you then have the ability to store your funds offline. So you can go through and print that off. And you would then go through and click on to save your address. So now it asks me how I'd like to go through and access my wallet. So there's different ways that I can do that. So I can connect that via MetaMask. Now I have actually created a full tutorial and review via my Ether wallet and connecting up MetaMask. And what I'll do is I'll put that in the top right hand corner. Now, again, the process will be the same in my crypto or my Ether wallet. So please take a look at that for yourselves. 
You can then connect via a Ledger wallet or a Trezor, so they are hardware wallets. You can also access via digital Bitbox. You can use your key store file, so that's the key store file that we just downloaded at the very beginning. You can also access via your mnemonic phase and your private key. Now what I'm gonna select for the moment is my key store file. Now when I do go through and select that key store file, it does come up with a warning for me. So it states that this is not a recommended way to access your wallet. Entering your private key on a website is dangerous. If website is compromised or you accidentally visit a different website, your funds will be stolen. So it goes through and tells you to please consider going through and connecting MetaMask or the hardware wallets like the likes of the Ledger Nano S or a Trezor. And you can go through and also you can run my crypto offline and locally. Now, the only reason why I'm using my key store file today is purely for the fact that I don't hold any live assets within this wallet. So I can just quickly take you through into your actual wallet itself and then click on to unlock. And then if I scroll down, it then provides me with my address. Now, this is my public address that I can share with others. This is obviously not my private keys. It allows me to go through and download that key store file if I wish. It provides me with my unencrypted private key. It provides me with the ability to go through and print my paper wallet. I also have a QR code in here, so I can go through, scan this, and it provides me with my public address. Then on the right-hand side here, I have my account address. Again, that is my public address. It will show me any account balance that I have in here. So at the moment, I've got zero ETH. However, if I did have ETH in here, it would obviously show under that account balance. And I can go through and I can view my transaction history on the likes of Etherscan for ETH, and I can also view my token transaction history through ethplora.io. If I have any tokens within this wallet, so from the back of an ICO or something like that, it would then display within the token section and you can click to load. And it will then show any balances that you there have. And if we then did have funds within our account balance, it would also show us the equivalent values in BTC, US dollars, euros, GBP, etc. And these are only the equivalent values for ETH and not your tokens. And if you then want to go through and send your funds, so if, for example, you have ETH and you want to go through and send that across to maybe an exchange, or if you have some tokens, you want to do the same thing, what you would then need to do is click on to send. So you do need to then go through and connect up your wallet again. So it then asks you for the available options. So you can go through and you can connect via MetaMask, via your hardware wallet, via your key store file, your private key, etc. Now what I'll do this time is I'm going to select MetaMask. And it then comes up and states that this is a recommended way to go through and access your wallet. MetaMask is a browser extension that allows you to access your wallet quickly, safely and easily. And it is more secure because you don't have to go through and enter your private keys onto a website and it protects you from phishing and malicious websites. Now, one thing to mention is the fact that you do need to be logged into MetaMask to be able to connect the two together. So what I'm going to do is go onto my MetaMask and then log in. So once I've then gone through and logged into my MetaMask, I can then connect to MetaMask. And if I then wish to go through and send any ETH or any tokens from my crypto, I can then put in the recipient address in the to address section. So that might be the likes of an exchange or if you're sending it over to another wallet, what you would do is you would copy and paste that wallet address into the to address. You could then put in the amount to send. So in here you would put in the send amount or you can go through and select send entire balance. And if you had any tokens available, they would also be available from this drop down. You can go through and you can set the gas limit. So this is obviously how you go through and get your transactions through a little bit quicker through the Ethereum blockchain. Now I have actually created a full review and tutorial of ETH gas station, and that'll help you to go through and actually get an understanding of what gas limits you need to put in to achieve faster transaction times. And once you're all set with that, you would then click on to generate transaction. Now, when you are connected to the likes of MetaMask, it will then prompt up and come up with MetaMask asking you to confirm that transaction. And you can go through and track the transaction through etherscan.io. You also have the ability to swap. Now within my crypto, they actually use Shapeshift, whereas within my Ether wallet, they actually had something called Bitty. Although the functionality is exactly the same. So it allows you to go through and do a simple exchange between two different types of coins. So I can say I want to swap one ETH and there's lots of different options in here. So you can go through and convert your Ethereum to the likes of Bitcoin, Civic, Gollum and WeTrust. So it's a nice simple way that you can go through and exchange your Ethereum for other types of coins and altcoins. 
And you also have the ability to go through and generate and send offline transactions with an online and an offline computer. Now just taking you across to their help section. So you have some nice little help sections of where you're having trouble, if you've got some coins, how to learn to go through and be secure, and what's next in terms of their advanced features. So that was a very brief overview of my crypto. So if you do already have the knowledge of how to use my Ether wallet, you can simply transfer those skills across to mycrypto.com. Now I don't know which one is going to be better in terms of my Ether wallet or mycrypto.com, but I think that the fact that 19 of the 20 members of my Ether wallet have moved across to mycrypto.com kind of says a lot. Now my Ether wallet is going through, they have started to employ more members, so there will be future development with my etherwallet.com. However, I guess the future is uncertain at the moment. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like. And if you'd like to see more tips, reviews and tutorials, then please hit subscribe. Thanks. And I'll see you soon.